an okay place. Hey there, Erwin here again, and today I'm going to be taking a dive into the exacts behind five of the most nuanced stealth-based mechanics in Helldivers 2. So settle in, because this is going to be a long one. I want to mention here, before I get rolling, that I cover stealth extensively on this channel, both gameplay and informationally. So if you are looking for more info on the mechanics of stealth gameplay after this video, then you should take a look. With that out of the way though, let's get started. First off, let's talk about the patrolling status. Whenever a group of enemies enters the map from the edges or sometimes a reinforcement call depending on where you are when they land, they can enter this status, in which they will begin to move along set paths vaguely towards the players on the map. They will react to any supply stratagems or defensive stratagems dropped in their vicinity some of the time. This behavior is pretty random and can be completely inactive at times. They will also move to investigate when a nearby objective is activated or extraction is called. If you enter a patrol's vision range, they will perk up in the case of the bugs, or flash red lights from their eyes in the case of the bots. After this happens, you have roughly three seconds to exit their field of view. Notably, even just laying down will usually suffice most of the time. Moving on to the next state, we're going to be talking about the guarding status. Enemies are set at the beginning of the match into a guarding state, around all points of interest and objectives on the map, in vastly varying quantities, with a few consistencies in between. Guarding enemies will not react to supply stratagem call-ins, but will engage defensive stratagems. Guards will also not leave their post unless provoked by a player action in general, meaning unless you mess with them or do something to get their attention, they will never move and just stand there. Even when you begin bludgeoning their friends to death as meleeing things makes absolutely no noise and garners no attention. Okay, now we can talk about the three statuses that enemies can enter when a player interacts with them. This first one probably has the most nuance, so we're going to talk about it first. The investigating status is a status that enemies will enter when they haven't become sure of your location yet, but have a reason to look for a disturbance. This can occur when a player fires a weapon in the vicinity of enemies, or otherwise kills an enemy with a quiet weapon from outside the line of sight of other guards. This will immediately send all guards in the vicinity to look for you, but not know exactly where you are. So anytime you take a shot while trying to sneak up on a base, make sure to vacate the premises quickly to avoid being found out. Notably, quiet weapons include all of the energy-based weapons as well as all sidearms, while some weapons, like the anti-material rifle, will immediately send enemies into a fully alerted status due to the noise level they produce. Speaking of which, the alerted status is when you've been busted. This can occur when you've spent too long within the enemy's effective field of vision, shot in an enemy within vision of another enemy, or thrown an offensive stratagem near the enemy. Enemies dropped off by a reinforcement call will also automatically enter an alerted status and begin attacking whoever alerted the enemy who triggered the call. Detector towers, should you walk inside them, will also call all nearby enemies to begin engaging you, as well as call a bot drop that exists outside the global cooldown to pursue you. There is also one more very important way that enemies can enter this state. It is when an alerted enemy passes by unalerted ones while pursuing you. The status tends to spread like a fire to all other nearby enemies. This can rapidly send situations out of your control as a result very quickly. Okay, time to talk about the last status, and I've mentioned this one a lot in my previous videos, but never gone into detail. I call this soft alert, and while it is most likely a bug, it's the bane of the stealth community and something we probably need to talk about at this point and live with for now. So let's talk about what it is. Soft alert is a status enemies can sometimes enter when they have previously been in an alerted status, but the target they are pursuing is lost to them. And I say lost in quotes because once they lose you, there is a chance the enemy will continue to move in a straight line towards the nearest player, not even necessarily the one who was originally being chased. In the case of the robots, they will sometimes even continue to fire in a non-committal way, sending out small volleys in the case of Devastators with pinpoint accuracy from any number of meters, even hundreds away. Following up with the very second a player re-entering the detection range of a soft alerted enemy, there will be no early warning, it will immediately swivel and open fire, entering a fully alerted status again, regardless if you are standing, crouched, or prone, as well as with no regard for their vision cones. This makes soft alerted enemies extremely dangerous, as they can follow you for a very long period of time without despawning, 
or get stuck on objectives you need to clear, creating a high degree of frustration at times. So when you hear a Devastator popping shots into a wall nearby, you now know what that is. Make sure to kill any enemies who exhibit these symptoms, or create enough distance to force a despawn. Hopefully this section of the video has explained a variety of situations you previously couldn't explain other than say, stealth is broken. Which, it is. But uh, just this particular part. As most if not all anomalies in the system can be linked back to whatever this bug and or mechanic is. Okay, phew, that was a lot. Now let's get into our next subject, enemy detection range. Every enemy in Helldivers 2 has a vision cone of roughly 120 degrees in front of them. They are virtually blind outside of this cone. So basically, if you move anywhere around this cone, the enemy will be completely unaware of you unless you move within their hearing distance of roughly 10 meters. Keep in mind, they will only hear you though if you are in the standing position, as you make no noise while crouching or prone. So, how close can we get exactly within this cone before they spot us? I've done the legwork to find out as well as figured out how close we can get with every existing modifier. Your baseline range from the enemy you will be detected from is 40 meters in the standing position, 30 meters when crouching, and 20 meters when prone. Now let's go ahead and add some modifiers. Nighttime, I have tested and confirmed, reduces enemy detection range as it says in the tooltips, reducing the range that you can be spotted to 30 meters standing, 20 meters crouching, and 15 meters while prone. Testing revealed that during the daytime and wearing the scout passive armor, this was much the same at 30, 20, and 15. But what happens if we mix the two? Well, if you wear the scout passive armor and go into a mission during nighttime, enemy detection range is reduced to just 25 meters standing, 17 meters while crouching, and only 10 meters in front of them while you are prone, allowing you to get absurdly close. But wait, there's one more modifier that can be stacked here. Weather modifiers. These include all planetary modifiers such as thick fog, torrential downpours, and blizzards. There is also variable weather effects like fog that can be turned on on planets that make no mention of it. So I can't give you hard numbers like the rest confidently. Just know that any weather effect you experience that feels like it's hampering your vision will also hamper the enemy vision. Except the spore cloud mushrooms. This only hampers our vision and does not hamper the enemy vision in any way. Make sure to destroy them as soon as you can. However, the enemy vision cone detection range can never go below 10 meters, no matter how many modifiers you've stacked together. So keep this in mind, you can't go give them a hug. At least not from the front. Our next topic is going to be on reinforcement calls, that being a bug breach or bot drop. There can only be one on the map at any given time, with an internal cooldown that reduces significantly the higher your difficulty level gets, going as low as 2 minutes on Helldive. This means splitting off from your team and baiting reinforcements away from major objectives can be a very valuable strategy. This is unfortunately not possible on Geological Survey, however, which does not respect this global cooldown. The Localization Confusion Booster, which I've mentioned in a recent video, also increases this global cooldown by roughly 15-30%, to 30%, allowing you more time between reinforcement calls to work efficiently. Make sure to take advantage of this mechanic for a smoother experience at higher difficulty levels. Playing around this mechanic is not without consequence, however, as enemy patrols will spawn independently around you when you split off, leading to some, at times, more cluttered-feeling maps where everyone is broken off into their own solo game. So, staying in groups of two is likely most efficient. A good follow-up mechanic to talk about now is how enemies can and will despawn when no player has been around them for a few minutes. This can be useful if you make a mistake and cause a reinforcement call at a location you needed to clear for an objective, but are lacking in the firepower to push through it. Leaving the area in favor of clearing other objectives, then returning later will often see these enemies despawn from the map or spread out, allowing you to try again with less resistance than if you were to brute force it. Useful information when you find yourself outgunned in an unwinnable situation with no other options. Another useful mechanic that we're going to cover really quickly is enemies cannot see you through any non-destructible surface. This is the best way I can describe this, meaning do not count on soft walls and destructible objects to protect you from detection. You will be disappointed and likely very frustrated with the results. Alrighty, this one is going to be long, but it is yet another mechanic I've glanced over previously, but never thoroughly. We are going to be covering how to perform a stealth extraction in detail. A stealth extraction is as it sounds, an extraction call in which you are able to wait out the full timer and extract out without engaging the enemy directly. So as soon as you call the extraction in, 
The first thing you want to do is use your scout armor, if you have it, to ping around the nearby area, as a patrol will be spawning shortly after the call goes out. This patrol, along with all others within about 200 meters, will begin pathing straight towards the extraction beacon. As soon as you have determined which direction the enemies are pathing in from, you need to position yourself accordingly, usually on the opposite side of the max distance from the beacon it will still count down, which is exactly 50 meters. While ideally, any teammates sit outside of range on the opposite side of you, as it is not necessary for more than one player to be within the extraction site during the countdown. This reduces the odds of someone being discovered significantly, and will also prove useful as a contingency if they are able to position themselves on the opposite side of you. After the enemy reaches the beacon, they will sometimes shoot randomly and return to their patrolling state after some time. This can cause them to begin patrolling in your direction as a result, and this will happen. Do not panic, and adjust as needed. Remember, if it's nighttime and you're wearing the scout passive suits, the enemy can get absurdly close to you while you are prone without detecting you. If you find the walls are closing in, so to speak, however, and you're about to be pinched between a few enemy patrols, back off from the extraction and ask your teammates on the opposite side to step in and hold the timer down for you while you reposition. This ensures that you are not caught and the extraction continues. If you are solo, however, all there is to do is back off and reset. Try again whenever the enemy disperses, and eh, those are the breaks sometimes. Better than ending up dead and getting bot dropped as this will lead to a soft locked disaster that ensures no one makes it out alive. Or at least not without a 4 minute death match. As an added note, if you find yourself with the walls closing in and there's absolutely no way out, cook that grenade soldier for Super Earth. I'm not saying we'll write a song about you, but we might have a conversation about you at the water cooler after. And now, another helpful tip from General Brash. For Aravin's continued effort put into training material almost as good as my own, I am ordering all active hell divers to like, comment, and subscribe to his channel. Failure to do so will be met with a mandatory call from your democracy officer. Brash tactics. Use them or die trying. That's going to do it for my breakdown of these rather obscure mechanics. Hopefully you found this video useful and can apply this knowledge to your hell dives. Thank you for watching till the end, and have a wonderful day. See ya!